Oh, very good morning. We continue to gather virtually to celebrate Easter. We are now in the seventh week of, of Easter, seventh week of our celebration of Christ rising from the dead. And uh, I hope you continue to celebrate that um, and rejoice in the, the good news of the resurrection. We begin with our resurrection introductory responses. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Son of Righteousness has risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Son of righteousness has risen. O come, let us worship. We continue with a portion of the 68th Psalm. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives, glory, gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. So when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come, into the, come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. 
When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, J James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come to glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life that they may know, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Traditionally, it's understood that 40 days after the resurrection, the ascension took place. Jesus spent 40 days appearing to the disciples, speaking to them about the kingdom of God, helping them out, feeding them, and opening the mystery of the resurrection to them. During those 40 days, I imagine it actually felt a lot more like normal than it did, almost like it did before Jesus died. I imagine the disciples started to get back into the, the pattern of life that they followed during Jesus' ministry. For them, the, the resurrection was the opportunity to, to continue to be the disciples of Jesus, to learn from him, to watch him, to witness his work in the world, and to hope for the glorious future that he promised. Forty days after the resurrection, the disciples were together with Jesus. And they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And almost as soon as he, he finished that sentence, a cloud came and took him out of their sight. The disciples stood there, looking up toward heaven. It was so sudden, it was so strange, it was so, so final. I imagine for the disciples, it must have been a really trying and, and difficult and, and terrible experience. One, Jesus, one minute, Jesus was there, teaching them, guiding them, helping them. Next, he was gone. I imagine they struggled with feelings that were kind of close to what they had experienced on Good Friday. I mean, certainly this wasn't a, as violent or, or horrific to experience, but, but still they found themselves all of a sudden alone. No Jesus to teach them. No Jesus to to set them on track. No Jesus to unpack the mysteries that they encountered. 
No Jesus to encourage them. They stood there, dumbfounded, looking up to heaven, and I imagine they were, they were wishing, wishing that they could just go with him, wishing that they, they weren't alone again facing the unknown. If they could go with him, it would be so much easier. There are times in life where living is harder than others. There are those difficult times in life. There's a time when a, a man was happily enjoying semi-retirement. He and his wife had some time, they had some disposable income, they could do some things around the house and take a trip or two. Life was good until his wife got sick, and she died way too early in life. That's a difficult time. There's a time when a family was growing up. There were the usual disputes between parents and teenagers, but there were good times spent together. There were family, night, family meals, there were nights by the TV, there were hockey games and, and mornings spent playing golf. Life was good until the eldest son was arrested, convicted, and put in jail. That's a time when life's a lot harder to live. There was a time when a, a woman had a good job. Wages were reasonable, the, the benefits fixed teeth and covered prescriptions and paid for eyeglasses. There was even a little money left over for the children's education funds. Life was good until word came that the the business was closing. She was going to be laid off. That's when life's hard, living, when living life is hard. Those are the kind of situations that when they happen to you, you get that funny feeling deep in your stomach. Your heart rate goes up and your mind races around in circles. Those are the kinds of, of experiences that are so hard and we feel nothing but heaviness and and tiredness and sadness. Those hard times in life are times when we stand looking up to heaven dumbfounded. We stand there wishing that it would just go away, that it would just stop happening, that, that God would rewind life and make it easier to deal with. Life would be so much easier, so much nicer without the pain, the disappointment, the trouble, the sickness the grief that we can experience. It'd be so much nicer if God would just, just make it go away. Bring the kingdom. End it all so we could live in the presence of his perfect love, never to suffer or cry or die again. If we could all just go straight to God, it'd be so much easier. As the disciples gazed up into heaven, they, they longed for that ease, that simplicity, that, that comfort, that peace. They longed to go with Jesus so they wouldn't have to go through any more hard times in life. As they stood there looking up, two men in, in white robes suddenly stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus that has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way you saw him go. In other words, there will be a time when you will be restored to the presence of Christ. But this isn't that time. The two men brought the disciples' thoughts back to earth. So, the disciples brought their eyes down and started walking. They went back to the room upstairs where they had been staying and where they had encountered Jesus following the resurrection. And what they did when they got there was to continually devote themselves to prayer. They still had plenty of living to do. And Jesus had said to them that he would be with them always into the end of the age. They weren't being called to God's kingdom yet. They were being called into the world. They were called to continue Christ's ministry in the world. And their connection to Christ 
The way that Christ remained present with them was through prayer. That's how their relationship with him continued and was, and was nurtured and sustained. Through the act of prayer, Christ was present with them to support them, to uphold them, to encourage them and guide them, to, to give them peace and strength to deal with all the challenges and difficulties of life. The disciples were in this odd place, an in-between time, if you will. As Father William Bosch calls it, they were in a time between loss and promise. They were between the loss of Christ's physical presence in their midst and the promise of his Holy Spirit that would be in them. And it was prayer. It was prayer that, that carried them through that in-between time. It was, it was prayer that prepared them to receive the promise. It was prayer that kept their relationship with Christ alive. It seems to me that any difficult time in life is a similar sort of in-between time. When someone dies, we have to live between the loss of that person and the promise that we'll be reunited with them in the kingdom of God. When someone gets into trouble, we have to live between the loss of who we thought they were and the promise of who they might be. When someone loses a job, we have to live between the loss of a, of a particular way of life and the promise of a new and better way of life. Being in between can be one of the hardest experiences there is because of all the uncertainty that's associated with it. But the reality is that we're called to live through it anyway. We're called to remain in the world as much as we'd like to escape into the perfection of God's kingdom. But the thing is, we're not cut off from the kingdom because we're in the world, because we're, we're in between. Through prayer, we are connected to God, to Christ, to the Holy Spirit, to the kingdom of God. Through prayer, the peace that passes all understanding is there for us. Through prayer, the, the strength that will enable us to mount up with wings as eagles is there for us. Through prayer, the, the hope and power of God is there for us. In those in-between times, that's what we need. In this time, that's what we need. We need the grace of God. And through prayer, that grace flows endlessly, abundantly, and powerfully. That's why prayer changes you. It will get you from loss to promise. It will get you from despair to hope. It will get you from hardship to glory. Prayer is what keeps us going in between. Prayer is what keeps us going when life is hard. Prayer is our lifeline to God. We each still have living to do in this world. We haven't been called to God's kingdom yet. We're in between. To get through this time, to move from loss to promise, from the world to the kingdom, we need to do what the disciples did. We need to continually devote ourselves to prayer, through which we will receive grace and blessing, strength and peace, everything we need in between. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray.
Let us pray for the church. Let us pray for Todd, our bishop, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, especially our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Jerusalem. Let us pray for our St. Mark's family. Let us pray that all the faithful may devote themselves to prayer, be filled with God's grace, and share that grace in all they say and do. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations. Let us pray that they would strive for justice and peace, for dignity and goodness, that they would strive to work together, that they would strive to ensure that those they serve and all people in the world may know the abundance and grace of God's love at work in our world. Let us pray for our world, for an end to war and violence and hatred and division, for an end to poverty and the suffering caused by natural disaster. Let us pray for an end to this pandemic. Let us pray for researchers, for scholars, for all those who are seeking ways to alleviate suffering that they may be filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let us pray for our community, for St. Clair Beach and Tecumseh, for Windsor and all of Essex County. Let us pray for our neighbors, that they may know God's love working in their lives and that they may live with us in peace and prosperity. Let us pray especially for our neighbors who continue to work at this time. Let us pray for those in medical professions, for those working in long-term care, for those working in stores, for those transporting goods, for, for those working in emergency services, and those who are continuing to ensure that all of our necessities are available so that we can continue to live. Let us pray that God would watch over each and every one of them. That God would protect them and keep them safe and healthy. Let us pray for those that are known to us, who are in need of our prayers. For the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill and the addicted. Let us pray for all those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray that God's healing and life-giving grace would touch their lives and lift them out of all of their difficulty. Let us pray for those who have died. And remember especially Rob and Minnie. Let us pray for all those who mourn. That the good news of the resurrection would give them hope, peace, and comfort through this difficult time. Let us pray for ourselves that in prayer we may find God's grace, that we may be so filled with it that it overflows from our lives and touches the lives of our families, our friends, our neighbors, and all those we encounter in every day. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to tem into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. May the God of hope 
fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Just before we have some post-service music, I want to, as I do every week, to thank you for your prayers and your faithfulness and ask you to continue that. Um, there is lots to pray for, and I hope that you will pray for those in need uh, in our parish community and, uh, and those that, uh, that you know are in need in your own life. I want to thank you for your continued support of the church and uh, for continuing to invest in the life of the church in spite of not, uh, not being able to be here in this, uh, in this place. Your support is deeply appreciated, and uh, we are very grateful for your, your faithfulness in that as well. Um, also, I want to say, please, if you need anything, please be in touch with the church. We have resources, we have capabilities, we can, we can help out. So please don't, uh, don't hesitate to be in touch. Um, and if you are, you are able to, to help out in, uh, yourself, um, please consider uh, making a donation to the Unemployed Help Center. They're doing some wonderful work supporting people in our community who have lost their jobs, who haven't been able to, to put food on the table in the ways uh, that they typically would. So it's a, it's a wonderful way for us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Coming up Thursday, as, uh, as usual, is Bible study. It's on Facebook. If you want to be part of it, let me know. Um, join us for that, please. Other than that, stay home, stay safe, stay in touch with each other. Our parish family is a, is a close one, and, uh, and you know, we, have to, we have to work to keep it that close. And uh, you can do that on the phone, by email, by Facebook message, all sorts of different ways. But, uh, but stay in touch with each other and, uh, and with your, the rest of the church family. It's a, it's a wonderful way to, uh, to look after each other and to share Christ with each other. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen.